Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My fiance cheated with my best friend's sister, and my parents pressured me to forgive him. I exposed their hypocrisy and walked away. I'm a 27-year-old woman who recently lost my temper with my parents, and it's been eating at me. They've been pushing me to forgive my ex fiance after he was unfaithful. We were supposed to get married in July, but everything came crashing down when I found out about his betrayal. Two months ago, I came home from a work trip to find my ex fiance in bed with my best friend's sister. I kicked him out, canceled the wedding, and told him to get his stuff. When he didn't come to collect it, weeks later, I dumped it all on the curbside with a free sign. I sold, donated, or threw away everything he gave me, and I pawned the ring. I blocked him everywhere, but he showed up at my door, banging and demanding to talk. I called the cops on him. Then he turned up at my workplace and made a scene, so I called the cops again. Even his family came and mass to plead his case, but I wasn't having it. I didn't completely go scorched earth on my ex-best friend's sister, but I did tell her husband what had happened. Last I heard, she was kicked out of their house and moved back in with her parents. My ex-best friend then tried talking me into giving both her sister and my ex a chance to explain. What? Absolutely not. Then she had the nerve to get angry at me, accusing me of ruining her sister's relationship and calling me petty and cold-hearted. So, I kicked her to the curb too. I don't want dishonest people who are blasts about betrayal in my life. This whole situation simmered under my skin until it finally exploded when I met my parents for dinner. Last week, I met them for dinner, hoping to keep the topic of my failed engagement off the table by bringing a date with me. I thought maybe having someone else there would keep them from bringing it up, but they did. They've been pressuring me to work things out with my ex. He's so, so sorry, they said. They told me I owe it to him to talk with him, to give him five minutes to explain himself. They insisted the other woman meant nothing to him, that it was just a mistake. I'm apparently cruel for shutting him out the way I have. They questioned how I could call the police on him and his family. They kept repeating how his parents are good people and didn't deserve to be humiliated like that. He's having a rough time, they said. He's depressed. Everybody is worried about him. He loves me. Really loves me. He's learned his lesson, they said, and it's time for me to grow up and forgive him. My answer was a firm no. Having my date there didn't stop them from pushing this narrative. I lost my cool. I asked my father if he expected me to give my ex a pass every time he cheats on me like he does. I then turned to my mother, asking how she could turn a blind eye to her husband's infidelity. How does she hold her head up while having lunch with women who have slept with her husband? Is that the kind of man, the life she wants for me and my sister? For her daughters? Did they have any idea of the impact that knowledge had on me and my siblings growing up? We knew why dad was late coming home from work because he was with his secretary. We knew that when he said he was going away for a work weekend, it was code for a getaway with another woman. Did they not realize why, out of their four children, I'm the only one who still talks to them? Did they never wonder why they weren't invited to my brother's weddings? Why they've never met either of my brother's wives and children? Did they think my sister's silence was just her being dramatic and throwing a tantrum? Really? I stood up from the table, looked at them, and congratulated them on the loss of their last remaining child. I told them I hoped their arrogance, willful blindness, and misery would be a comfort to them in their final years. Then I left. My date bless him took me to the nearest bar, let me cry on his shoulder while I got drunk, and then made sure I got home safely. The next day, he messaged me to see if I was okay and even sent a double cheeseburger, large fries, and a large Sprite over with DoorDash. I didn't block my parents, but I haven't heard from them. It's been a week, and I've calmed down enough to feel regret. Not for what I said but because I can see the looks on their faces when I made my final farewell. I crushed them, especially my mother, despite all their faults, and there are many, I love my parents. I hate that I hurt them, and now I'm dealing with a lot of guilt about it. Some of the comments from people who heard about my situation have been supportive, while others have been more critical. One person said that my date is a keeper and that I should lock him down, bringing him flowers, chocolate, violins, whatever it takes. This guy showed up on a first date, fully willing to handle the potential drama and did it like a champ. It reminds me of another story a friend once told me about a guy who broke both arms in a bike accident. They hadn't been dating long, but her boyfriend helped her with everything she needed to do. I strongly advised her to put a ring on that catch, and they've been married for a while now. In an update, I mentioned that I did warn my date about what was going on and even gave him the chance to postpone our first date. He agreed to go and said, if needed, he could post bail. That right there is the kind of ride or die person you want in your life, whether as a partner or a friend. I realize it's too soon for me to jump into a new relationship, but I hope to at least keep in touch with this guy. Another commenter said they would have been cheering me on if they had been present during my confrontation with my parents. Just because they're my parents doesn't mean they shouldn't be put in their place. Why do cheaters and enablers think they deserve an explanation that makes their behavior okay? Nothing ever makes cheating okay. There is no excuse, no explanation. She meant nothing to me, so that makes it all right, as long as it means nothing. It's okay to be with whoever. Does that mean I'm free to do the same, to be with others too because he doesn't mean anything to me? They certainly wouldn't want me to cheat, right? And yet, everyone thinks I owe him a chance to talk to me, but I don't owe him anything. 
I'll never understand why people rally around the cheater. Poor cheater, they're so remorseful, they say. I should take him back. How about these enablers understand that the cheater brought this on himself and has to live with the consequences of his own actions? It's not the responsibility of the person who got cheated on to make everything better for everyone else. It's sickening. Friends and family should rally around the person who got hurt, not the one who caused the pain. My ex-BFF needs to get this straight too. I didn't ruin her sister's relationship. She ruined it herself and mine too. Good for me for telling her husband. He had a right to know. I'm in no way responsible for the fallout from that revelation. She cheated on him. She ruined her own marriage, not me. I'm sorry all of this happened, but I'm proud of myself for not putting up with anyone's nonsense for holding everyone in my life accountable, and for taking care of myself and moving on. And hey, that date I went on. He sounds like a keeper. Another commenter said, If you were my daughter, I would be so proud of you. They suggested I send my mother a card to tell her I love her, but that I really suffered from the lack of truth in our household. But they also reminded me not to think I've crushed my parents. People who live in that kind of delusion are stronger and more resilient than you'd think. They're probably already spinning some story along with every other person who betrayed me so that they don't have to look at their own immature, selfish, and wrong life choices. To hell with the ex, the friend's sister, the ex's family, and anyone who suggests I should consider a miserable future just to make the status quo easier for them. It's a shame that the bravest people who break the patterns of the past end up feeling guilty about having to do that. I was about to repeat my mother's life, and thank goodness I didn't because living a lie makes you do terrible things, including encouraging your daughter to live a life of deception and betrayal. My mother has a lot to answer for, and so does my father. Chances are they're not going to have a come to Jesus moment, as we used to say. I'm sorry that my mother is hurt, but I'm a mother myself, older than she was when she had me. And if she were my friend, I'd have given her an earful for even suggesting I overlook my ex's behavior. I'd also let her know that staying with a terrible husband and pretending everything is okay teaches your children what matters most, and it's not their well-being. I did the right thing by every single person, including myself. My mother needed to hear this so she could think about the kind of sad, familiar life she was hoping I'd have. My father needed to hear this before it's too late because someday— He'll understand that all those years I kept in touch with him and was kind. I knew exactly what he had been doing, and I was kind anyway. They don't deserve me, and I hope they can feel that somewhere in their hearts, even if they are shut down, they love people who shut up and never let the truth come to light. That's not the kind of love I want, and I can't believe I was brave enough to say so to every single person who advocated for my misery. If I ever advised any of my children to stick it out with someone who did what my ex did, I'd get my butt into therapy immediately because that's toxic, and my kids deserve better than what I put them through. End of story. My father needed to know that his behavior isn't forgiven or forgotten. And I think it's a very good thing I told them both exactly why they don't have close relationships with any of their children. I'm so proud of myself. I wish I could see into the future and the wonderful family I will establish because it's very clear that I won't settle for less. I'm so glad I broke that pattern. And sometimes that's how you have to do it. Maybe I will send my mom a card if it's really bothering me, and I'll make sure to pick up some flowers for myself while I'm at it. So many people have said never settle and I finally understand why. My parents might want me to, but I won't. It's a shame on them for pushing me to go back to someone who betrayed me so deeply. My ex-fiance is beneath contempt, and it's clear to me now that I've been surrounded by people who don't have my best interests at heart. My best friend turned out to be anything but. Canceling the wedding was the best decision I ever made. Now, it's time to protect myself from these people who claim they love me but show their love in such twisted ways. I'm sending myself the best wishes because I know I deserve them. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.